Coming up, a community comes together to support a state trooper facing a long battle with COVID. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. We're going to begin with some breaking news tonight. One person is dead and another injured after a stabbing in Johnson County. Sheriff Doug Saylor tells us 47-year-old Christy L. Blair of Oil Springs was arrested tonight and charged with murder and first-degree assault. One woman is dead. Another person that was stabbed was taken to Highlands ARH in serious but stable condition and has since been transferred to Pikeville Medical Center. Their names have not been released. Blair is being held in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. We will update you as more information is released. There was a chilly supper tonight in downtown Corbin to raise money for Kentucky State Police Trooper Chris McQueen and his family. Trooper McQueen has been battling COVID-19 and pneumonia for months, but there is some good news. WIMT Zach Hawk went to the fundraiser and spoke with Chris's family, friends, and complete strangers who just wanted to support him. To many, Chris McQueen is more than a Kentucky State Trooper. He's a father, a husband, and a fierce friend. Chris, as everyone can see, is loved in the community. Um, I have went to church with Chris most of our older life and um, just a great Christian man. Uh, we've shared a lot of things to our church and our families are very close. The bonds McQueen made in the London Corbin community run deep. I've known Chris pretty much all my life since I was about 11 years old, went to car shows with him. Uh, always been a great guy, leader in the community. Uh, anytime anybody needs anything, he's there to help. Never heard anybody say a bad word about him. I just wanted to give my support and uh, help raise funds for what the family's going through. I know it can't be easy, so I just want to be here to give my support to the family. And according to family, McQueen is as kind as it gets. I've known Chris all my life. Um, he is more than just a cousin. He's a brother to me. The Chili Dinner is the latest in a series of events to help the family cover medical and travel expenses. His wife, Jessica, shared an update on his fight with those in attendance. This is absolutely incredible. Um, Chris, he also knows about everything that's going on. He knows about the Chili Dinner, and he is he's very grateful um, that everyone is showing so much support and that everyone is showing this much kindness. And this is exactly what he would do if it was anyone else that we knew in this situation. Recently, McQueen's family thought he might need a lung transplant, but his situation has improved enough that it may not be necessary. In Corbin, Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. That's certainly some good news. Organizers with the Corbin Tourism and Convention Commission told us the fundraiser was a success. They saw about 100 people come in and they raised nearly $3,000. All of that money will go towards Trooper McQueen's medical costs and help his family travel to be with him. We talked with Kentucky Board of Education officials today about how they handle investigations into misconduct. This comes after Hazard High School's controversial man pageant pictures that drew national criticism last week. We are told the Educational Professional Standards Board handles the investigations. Educators can risk losing their certificates or face other disciplinary action. We certainly um, take our due diligence in looking at um, each of the complaints as they come to us. It's a very serious situation when we're looking at an educator's certificate. We are told the board does not set a time for how long an investigation lasts. Once it is completed, possible action is voted on publicly. A maintenance worker filed a lawsuit against Corbin Independent Schools and three co-workers claiming a prank led to serious injuries. Daniel Rice filed the lawsuit in October for the prank that occurred over the summer. Rice claims the other men, Dwayne Logan, Mark Logan, and Finley Thomas, fastened several firecrackers into an improvised explosive device and rigged it to explode once Rice sat down on a toilet. That's exactly what happened, and Rice says the explosion resulted in serious burns, cuts, and bruises below the waist. Another chilly night in the mountains tonight as we see plenty of cold weather moving back into the region. Outside right now, you see 
at least from our time lapse camera at I-64 at Moorhead. We saw a little bit of sunshine there right before the sun set, but otherwise it's chilly out there. We're already at 34 at London Corbin Airport. All is quiet on the runway this evening. Many of us only got into the mid 50 or excuse me, mid 40s for daytime highs today. A couple of 50 degree readings Jonesville and in Richmond today. Just outside of the area temperatures already chilly around the area. 29 Monticello, 28 in Irvin. And we're sitting at freezing in Somerset in Hazard and in Wise, Virginia. Few upper 30s left, but we're all headed down into the low 30s. We head into tonight as clouds clear off. We'll continue to see temperatures fall. That's why we have a freeze warning in effect for everybody just about overnight. The end of the growing season as we finally get that killing freeze in through here. So low 30s for tonight, though some will drop down into the upper 20s under mostly clear skies. We do have a warm up on the way, though. I'll have the details on that coming up in just a few short minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has authorized the emergency use of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for the prevention of COVID to include now children 5 through 11 years of age. St. Clair Hospital in Moorhead will be offering the vaccine at the St. Clair Medical Pavilion for those ages 5 to 11 on Saturday, November 6th. They'll be available from 8 a.m. until noon in addition to regular business hours. A limited number of appointments will be available at this time. A new face is set to take the reins at the Whitley County Sheriff's Department. This coming after Sheriff Todd Shelley announced in a letter that he'll be retiring to spend time, more time with his family. Shelley had one year left before his term expired, but will step down on November 30th. Judge Executive Pat White named Emergency Management Director Danny Moses as interim sheriff. Moses says it's an honor. It's going to be a new experience. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of take care of the office. Uh, Chief Baker is probably going to take care of most of the road work, the deputies. Uh, he's real qualified for that, so I'm going to try to take care of the office, taxes, and so forth. Moses will begin his temporary term on December 1st. Some good news for the Whitley County Sheriff's Office. Deputies will now have an added layer of safety while on the job. The department announcing it is acquiring body cameras for all officers on duty. Officials say the grant was given recently as the department will be undergoing several changes during the next month. Interim Sheriff Danny Moses says these will go a long way in addressing both public and officer safety. We're going to start those uh, probably in December. Uh, I think that would be a great asset to the county to have those. It's going to protect them. It's also going to protect the public. Uh, there shouldn't be any doubt, any question. All you got to do is go back and look at the tape. Moses says each deputy will be equipped with one, including the sheriff on duty. Kentucky State Police are looking for Orville Keith Roark from Olive Hill. He's not been seen or heard from since early to mid-September. Now his brother Jerry is leading the search to find him. While Orville has gone away before, Jerry says he always calls to check in with his friends and his 10-year-old daughter. It's just not like him just up disappear and I think his cell phone is the main thing. He always kept that cell phone working, no matter if he didn't have very much money or whatever, he always put minutes on that phone for it not to be working since September the 14th. It's just, it's just not right. Orville is about five feet, eight inches tall with shoulder length auburn hair, a gray beard, and a barbed wire tattoo on his left arm. If you see him, you're asked to call Kentucky State Police at 606-928-6421. The Office of Unemployment Insurance will begin requiring all claimants to meet a new identity verification beginning tomorrow. The new system that unemployment offices will be using is called ID.me. This move is expected to help reduce the number of fraudulent unemployment insurance claims. And this again is a certified system. It is used by the Social Security Administration. Veterans Administration, the IRS, and about 24 other states across this country with unemployment insurance. And it is very easy to do. IDME will become the new point of entry for all claimants through a new sign-on portal, ensuring that all eligible people receive unemployment insurance benefits. As the pandemic set in, many traditional sports were canceled or put on hold, but one sport pressed on. Esports has been gaining popularity for years and garnering attention across the world and here in the mountains. 
High schools and colleges are integrating eSports programs into their regular set of traditional sports teams. The pandemic only helped the popularity of these sports and brought hope to those looking to make competitive gaming a mainstream event and a program at many schools. One day when it finally happens and it'll just be like any other sport, you be recruited, you come, you perform, you get recruited into like the higher ups and you actually play professionally and then make it as easy as possible is really the dream because then people don't have to struggle. Leather Barrel says he has noticed more interest from middle schools and high school students and hopes to make a positive impact in the sport. Many churches and a crowd of volunteers will make their way to the Appalachian Wireless Arena in Pikeville this Thanksgiving, acting as one church. One Church of Eastern Kentucky is hosting its sixth annual community Thanksgiving meal, offering delivery, grab and go, and dine in options for those in need. Something organizers say they are glad to offer this year as they continue to welcome donations and volunteers to be part of that mission. Last year, due to the pandemic, we were unable to do this event, but this year it's so great we get to come together and we get to fellowship all these different churches and community people that get to come together and just enjoy giving back to the area. The dinner will take place at the Appalachian Wireless Arena on Thanksgiving from 10.30 until 2 p.m. Volunteers can drop in from 7.30 a.m. until 2 to lend a hand. Still to come at 11, we'll break down how the University of Kentucky is supporting athletes navigating the new world of name, image, and likeness. And cold temperatures are staying with us for the rest of the work week, but we do have improvements by the weekend. I'll have the latest coming up. Are you